Okay, so we are back for video number two. Uh, the first part of the video is going to focus on some corollaries to the theorem that we learned in the previous video. Uh, so the first corollary states that if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So let's look at this a little bit further by analyzing our diagram. All right, so if we look at angle one and angle two, both of those angles intercept this same arc. And what I'm going to do is I'll just call this point, maybe point B, and this point C. So since those two angles intercept arc BC, angle one has to be congruent to angle two. Okay, so that's the first corollary. The second one. This is an angle that's inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Now, if you remember back to the previous theorem, what that told us is that this inscribed angle right here, so we'll call that angle NML, okay? The arc that that angle intercepts measures 180 degrees. And that angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Half of 180 is 90, so it makes sense that if an angle is inscribed in a semicircle, then it has to be a right angle. The third corollary states that if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. So let's explore that a little bit further. Sorry about that here. So I'm going to grab a couple different color pens. So this is going to take a second. All right. So let's focus our attention on angles H and F because those are opposite angles um, in a quadrilateral. So angle H intercepts arc EG. Angle F, let me grab the highlighter, and I'm actually going to highlight that in blue, intercepts this arc right there. Now, the total measure of the arcs that those angles intercept is 360 degrees. It makes a complete circle. And we know that the measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of the arc that it intercepts. So we have two angles that are intercepting arcs with a sum of 360 degrees. And if we know that those angles have to be half the measures of the intercepted arc, if we divide that by two, then the sum has to be, sum of the angles has to be 180 degrees. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at examples of how to apply each of those corollaries. So example number one is going to show us how to apply, excuse me, apply corollary number one. So example three is going to show us how to apply corollary number one. So remember, if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So we know that the measure in this case of arc AB it's 120 degrees. And what we're asked to do is to determine the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two. So if we look, angle one intercepts that 120 degree angle. Angle two also intercepts that 120 degree angle. So both of them intercept the same angle. Each of them has to be half of that based off the theorem that we looked at in the previous video. So both of those are going to have to measure 60 degrees. Example four illustrates um, corollary number two. So if we look at example number four, it says that if CE is a diameter, then the excuse me, arc CDE is a blank, and then the measure of angle three is blank. Well, if CE is a diameter, that means that this arc that it intercepts has to be a semicircle.
and based off corollary number two, which states that an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Well, angle three meets that condition, so the measure of angle three has to be 90 degrees. We're going to flip to the next page so we can illustrate um, corollary number three. So corollary number three reads or states that if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. So if we take a look here, we have a quadrilateral that is inscribed in this circle. Angle four and angle five are opposite angles. So those two angles are supplementary. So if one of those, in this case, the measure of angle four is 75, then the measure of angle five is going to have to be 105 degrees because 105 plus 75 equals 180. All right, so those are some examples um, of how to apply the corollaries that we discussed in the previous page. There's one more theorem that I want to go over. We're going to skip this exploration. But we're going to go straight down to this theorem. All right, so we're going to go over this theorem, and then I'm going to show you an example, and then I'm going to tell you what I want you to do after that. So this reads that the measure of an angle formed by a chord and a tangent is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. So the angle that we're looking at here, this angle, which is angle PXY, one of the sides is a chord. The other side is formed by a tangent. Okay, If that's the case, then that angle measures half of the arc that it intercepts. So in this case, it's half the measure of XY. All right, so again, if we look here, the angle PXY is formed by a chord and a tangent, and the measure of that angle is equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. All right, let's show you how we apply that. All right, so in this case, or in this example rather, um, it says if XP, ray XP, is a tangent to circle A, and the measure of arc XZY equals 260, we want to find the measure of arc XY, and we also want to find the measure of angle PXY. So, oops, let me grab a pen real quick. Here we go. All right, so here's arc XZY, and we are told that that measures 260 degrees. So the first thing we're asked to find is the measure of XY. Well, that's pretty easy. The measure of that is just 360 minus 260. So the measure of arc XY has to be 100, 100 degrees. And now the next thing that we're asked to find is the measure of angle PXY. So we're looking for this angle right here. So that angle meets the description of the types of angles that we were looking at in the previous theorem. Okay, so it's formed by a chord of the circle and um, a tangent to the circle. All right, so the vertex is the intersection of those two points. So that angle, measure of angle PXY, has to equal half the measure of the intercepted arc. So in this case, the intercepted arc is 100 degrees, which we just calculated a second ago. So half of that would be 50 degrees. All right, so here's what I'd like you to do. If you look, the remainder of this note sheet is classroom practice, okay? So there are 20 problems here, the first six, and then here are the remaining problems on the next page. What I'd like you to do is to try these problems on your own, um, and then when you're finished, if you go to the resources column um, in Google Classroom for this assignment, um, you will find a detail, you'll find an answer key for this, and I want you to check your answers. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me or you can message me through Google Classroom with any questions that you have. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and we will talk to you guys soon.